The 2008 tour may not have begun in Britain as it did in 2007, but British interest in the business end of both the stages and the race itself would reach unprecedented levels this year. On stage five, a new talent announced himself. He was Mark Cavendish, a fearsome sprinter from the Isle of Man. The breakaway rider was swept up cruelly, yards from the line. In the Columbia car, Cavendish's team management waited anxiously for news of their rider. Congratulations, guys. Perfect. The day went perfect. They did everything they had to do and uh, tactic was good. Cavendish brought it home. His first really, really, really big victory. Tour de France, stage five. Champagne tonight. Handling. <laughs> Cavendish and Columbia weren't finished. The rider had a taste for glory now, and stage eight would see his second victory. In the yellow jersey was the Australian Cadell Evans. He was second to Contador in 2007. And now, because Contador's new team, Astana, was still serving a ban for the Vinokurov doping affair from that same year, Evans was one of the favourites for the title. Sadly for the tour, removing Astana for a year hadn't removed the problem completely. The Italian rider Riccardo Rico, who had won stages six and nine, tested positive for a banned blood-boosting substance and was thrown out of the race. His team, Sonia Duval, removed themselves from the race too. As recently as 2011, and even after serving a two-year ban, Rico was admitted to hospital after a self-administered blood transfusion went horribly wrong in what many believe may have been an attempt to disguise doping. Thankfully, he survived, but has now retired from cycling for good. For the British cycling fan, starved of regular victories to cheer since the heydays of Chris Boardman and David Miller, 2008 was turning into a great year. Mark Cavendish won stages 12 and 13 back to back. He was starting to look like the natural successor to that Australian sprint great Robbie McEwen. It's a long way to the line, make it number four. Cadell Evans was wearing the yellow jersey. That was until he came into the sights of two competitive brothers from Luxembourg, Andy and Frank Schleck. They had their eyes on Evans's jersey, determined that at least one of them would be wearing it come Paris. Their attack on Evans on stage 15 at the finish at Prato Novoso was brutal and unrelenting.
The stage itself was won by another Australian, Simon Gerrans, after an escape. But back down the mountain, both of the Schlecks took seconds out of the leader, Evans. The final attack didn't happen until 500 metres from the line. It was here that Frank Schleck finally managed to gain an advantage, eventually taking seven seconds out of Evans, taking yellow and dropping the Australian down to third in the GC rankings. Frank became the first Schleck brother to wear the yellow jersey. However, as Cadell Evans found, winning the yellow jersey and keeping the yellow jersey are two very different things. Stage 17 was from Embrum to Alp Duis, one of the iconic climbs of the tour. Carlos Sastra, the leader of the CSC team, had spent the previous two weeks minding his own business gradually ascending the GC until he found himself in fourth place overall. All the lenses had been pointing at Evans and then the Schlecks. Sastra chose stage 17 to make his one decisive move. It was a brilliant plan, perfectly executed, that left the other riders struggling to minimise their losses. Sastra made his move at the foot of the Alp Duez. He had six CSC teammates to help him initially, but once they'd reeled in the breakaway, Sastra simply stood up and accelerated into the distance, leaving everyone else behind. Frank Schleck, as a teammate of Sastra's, was following CSC team orders, as was brother Andy, so they weren't inclined to help anyone else up the mountain to challenge their team leader. It was only really Cadell Evans who was capable of organising a chase, which he tried to do with four kilometres to go. It was to no avail. The best he could hope for was a damage limitation exercise. He kept his losses down to two minutes, 15 seconds, but it meant that Sastra was now in yellow, with a lead of one minute, 23 seconds over teammate Frank Schleck, with Evans himself dropping down to fourth, one minute, 34 seconds back. The only hurdle left for the Spaniard to get over was the time trial. Much like his compatriot Alberto Contador, it isn't a favourite discipline of Sastra's. But wearing yellow can make a rider push himself to places he might never previously have been. Sastra's lead of 1 minute 34 over the man most likely to beat him in a time trial, Cadell Evans, looked to be enough. And so it proved. Evans did manage to take 29 seconds out of that lead after a Herculean effort, but he was never close enough to take yellow after Sastra's masterclass on the Alp Duez. Carlos Sastra was the man who sneaked up on everyone to take his first tour victory. He was brilliantly sheltered by his CSC team, especially Frank Schleck, whose brother Andy won the best young rider jersey and whose team, unsurprisingly, won the team trophy. At 33 years old, Carlos Sastra became the seventh Spaniard to take the Tour de France title.